Meghan Markle here. Today is January 30th, 2023. It is 12.36 a.m. This is my first video. Um, my first tweet is going to be discussing this video that I posted yesterday. And I made it a complete video by itself uh, as a test to see how YouTube was going to react to the audio. And uh, what I did is that I didn't play the the video i only let the audio play and then put images as uh, and correspond to whatever the words were being said all right so let's go on twitter so this is where i got it but i didn't share um this image of it all right so i may not play it again here uh, if you want to see it um. go watch it on my channel or I don't want to have any issue with this video okay let's read the comments and then go on uh, the response to this tweet okay shaman Dorek posted this video on tiktok with the caption i'm honored that my future father-in-law listens to me and stands by my side on racism meanwhile king tampon to harry don't bring your black wife abolish the monarchy okay so that's uh the black gentleman i think he's um, uh african-american i think so and i think they're living in the u.s so i've spoke about them very briefly uh on pyte um i don't know why i brought them up before some stuff that happened i don't know but pretty much vanessa uh, found it on on TikTok and then bought it on Twitter and then I was able to share it with you due to the sensitivity of YouTube especially what happened to PYT I only play the audio but uh, put images instead of the let the video play okay so that's that let uh, mm, should I play it? let me play it and see what happened if you don't see this video here that means I cut it out because YouTube gave me some issues, but I'm going to stop in between. Let's listen. And, you know, recently within the last couple of months, the King of the Netherlands and the King of Norway have led by example. The King of the Netherlands has acknowledged and apologized for the role that slavery and colonialism took in shaping the country and is taking steps to try to ensure that its citizens do not feel that they are being discriminated against. Okay, so, you know, I, like I said, you heard it already, but I had to stop somewhere. Um, yeah, that's the King Netherlands. I'm wondering, during the Invictus, if they had some talk as well, there's telephone, there's stuff. So, but I'm just happy they're not following what's happening in the UK. Because the UK is so corrupt, they removed themselves from Brexit. So, I don't know. I think Charles got himself in too much nonsense where he can't really do what he wants to do because those other people, are, in my humble opinion, are controlling him. All right. So let's continue. They can do that with the queen because the queen was in, into all those mess. But they got the uh, her son, Charles, and then Charles got William involved because due to the article that i came across since he was early uh, 20s charles was getting him involved in the same corrupt kind of thing and thank god they didn't bring her harry okay i have the uh, the screenshot the article of him taking william to parties and that's how he sort of got him into it in my humble opinion and the king of norway has recently come to the defense of his daughter and yeah. her fiance who is black the couple have been subject to racist remarks and comments the king has asked for both unconscious and conscious racism to be stopped. I'm just happy they're taking the right step because when you look at on their side of their family, their kids that's growing up, okay, so they don't f have to feel like uh, they, uh, 
it's their fault for certain things. So they put a stop to it. I, I hope American can learn from that as well. Because the things, the people and position of power, like say like Florida, the governor, what he's doing. So at least they could learn from that. But do they want to learn? I don't know. But let's continue. And I congratulate them for that enormously. And I don't think they've been given enough credit for what they've done. But it is huge. And more of that is needed. Yeah, when I first heard Harry saying that, and I'm thinking, uh, if it's if it's really, uh, how will I put it so it doesn't sound kind of dumb? Um, waiting for his father. You know what? Let, let's let me leave it alone. It's just that sometimes it's better to know how the person really feel than pretending to. Uh, accept you when in fact they're not to put it in simple word but it was much more than that than that that i was thinking all right so there's more yet he still wants to work for his so-called father and reconcile with him okay let's see here 58 second i'm gonna stop in between is there a part of you that can see you and your family going back to the uk becoming working worlds with the monarchy no i just don't think i don't think it's ever going to be possible i don't think that you know, even if there was an agreement or an arrangement between me and my family, there is that third party that is going to do everything they can to make sure that <laughs> that isn't possible. Not okay, so wait, yet he still wants to work for his so-called father and reconcile with him. But Harry just said no. But the thing is that Harry just said there's a third party, which could probably be men in grey suit or the wife or... You know the government probably you know which could add up to the third party but harry doesn't um say uh he wants to work with the father but um he's saying that um he said no point blank at the beginning uh right, it stopped right here let's listen to it again is there a part of you that can see you and your family going back to the uk becoming working worlds with the monarchy no I just there it is he just said no he doesn't see it but he sees that there's possibility of a third group the the group the third group that he's talking about could either be uh, men in gray suit or the government or something like that to prevent him from doing the thing that he wants to do all right don't think i don't think it's ever going to be possible there i don't is. think that you know even if there was an agreement or an arrangement between me and my family okay now this is where he said if there was an agreement between him and his family family meaning that his father not the firm okay the father this is the thing the uk does not want to differentiate there's a family and then there's the business aspect of it okay so he wants to what he's mentioning here his father his family the one who f his mom to produce him <laughs> that's what he's talking about not the firm huh? there is that third party that is going to do everything they can to make sure that <laughs> that isn't possible third party could be men in gray suit um the government okay who's gonna make sure that doesn't happen okay not stopping us from actually going back but making it unsurvivable hmm. Yeah, to like the same thing when they went to the funeral, make their life a living hell. The royal voters, the you know, the tabloid and all that. Oh my god, the entire UK is corrupt. It's corrupt. Everyone in certain position, they need to be out and then have people vote people in because right now it the entire system is corrupted. And that's really sad because that is essentially breaking the relationship between us. If there was something in the future where, you know, we can continue to support the Commonwealth, then that's, of course, on the table. But I genuinely believe that if me and my family can reconcile, can put our differences behind us, but first there needs to be conversation and accountability. Yeah, he wants accountability. Yeah, he's differentiating the firm within the, fa uh, the family. So yeah i mean he grew up and he know exactly what he's talking about and he said the if in the future there's something uh where he could work with the commonwealth or whatever but before that can happen there needs to be accountability for things that he and his wife went through 
So this is what he's saying. There must be accountability for the nonsense that they put him to. And it was huge. If you've been following on me on Pure YTE, I will go back to Pure YTE eventually if it gets monetized again. Okay. So there needs to be accountability. Okay. A lot of this stuff were um, discussed on Pure YTE. Is there a part of you? Oh, it's that starting over. See- Let's see here. There's 13 comments. Okay, he praised the King of Norway and Netherlands for being accountable and said he will reconcile with his family if, okay, there's this, if they also take accountability for their action. Where are you finding issue with that? Are you saying that even if atone, if they atone, the royal family aren't worthy of forgiveness? Okay, that's to comment under it, okay? He loved his father. Why should we expect him not to find a way to reconcile. If Charles agreed to change, people online act as if this is their life and they have never compromised. Okay, this. Okay, yeah. I mean, Harry grew up with his father. And when you read the, uh, what you call it, the uh, spare, you could see the relationship he had with his father. I mean, many of us may not be approved of it, but for him, this is what he grew up and. He's immune to it. He accepted it. He knows these people. This is who he grew up. We have to respect his choice. Okay. But me from the outside, I see something completely different. Okay. It's not for me to say. Okay. When, okay. That's that. When did he say he wants to work with the royal family? He explicitly said he is never going back to that life. Yep. Okay. You can ask him to stop visiting the country that he was born in and fought for. I don't see any racially profiling citizen living the UK. They are trying to change the system. Okay, the bonds of family are not so easily broken even when things are bad. The desire to get along remains. Okay, from my perspective, what I see, it's the wife, okay, Camilla, okay, I think that's putting the tension between the uh, father and son. This is what I think. Okay, when you look at uh, the Jeremy Clarkson kind of thing and a lot of there's that TikTok video that I came across it's on one of my videos okay where they explaining how uh, their areas were exposed even in the book when Harry said certain things happened before you know it it was leaked okay that is making things you know stirring the pot the same kind of misery she put Diana to that's the same thing he's putting within the institution uh, between father and son all right, let's read what's there and then move on. I think Harry just wants to be of service to people and not be under his father's thumb. He will always stay self-funded, but he will always want to be there of service for the Commonwealth. I think so too. Okay, he loves his father. Many of us love parents. If we have a contentious relationship, regardless of that, we love them. He's not wrong. If he can get his father to change, okay, his father is his father. That's it. Yep, you can't remove his blood tie, DNA, anything. There'll always be a bond trauma or not get his father his choice that's exactly that and then the people around charles heavy have said it where when due to the work that he does there's people around him you know uh do creating negativity advising the wrong thing without I mean, i've been a pessimist many times because of the because of the work that we end up doing you can be surrounded by negativity sometimes because all of these people around charles they want to benefit from some of the things the choices that he made so they will always advise him the same way you see they advise the queen uh to somewhat benefit those business people okay so i'm done with this let's go to the next tweet i stayed too long on that Okay, if you want to hear the complete audio of it, you either go to my other uh, video that I posted yesterday or, I don't know, go on TikTok. All right, so this one I just saw and I decided to put it. Okay, Laura should be focusing on what's going on in the UK, not Harry and Meghan, who's left nearly three years ago and lives in the US. What Harry and Meghan do has got okay have said all to do with them they are private citizens no longer funded by taxpayers what uh, other embarrassment these journalists are okay Laura Kensenberg try to get the u.s ambassador to jump on the hate megan and harry bandwagon oh they tried to do it when trump was there and i saw if god forbid trump were to be the next president how they were easing themselves into let me not go there all right 26 seconds. Let's see. Okay. You've been here uh, 
at an extraordinary time, as you said. You were sworn in while the Queen was still alive and you've met the new King now. Yes. Um, there's also been huge uh, attention and discussion of Harry and Meghan's move to the US. Um, is there a lot of sympathy for Harry and Meghan in America, do you think? I mean, of all questions, what the hell will you ask about that? I, uh, it's almost done, okay? I have like five seconds left on this. I wish this was longer to hear her response because Harry and Meghan are private citizen in the US. She has absolutely nothing, nothing to do with Harry and Meghan, okay? Oh my God, but let's listen. You know, uh, I never like to go into family dynamic. Okay, that's it. Here. That's it. <laughs> wow, she, I think she responded in three seconds. She doesn't want to go to family dynamic aspect. That's it. Even though Biden is friend with Harry, okay, he will never, very red, I don't know. So far, he stay out of it. And this is exactly that. Let me pick it up right here again. Let's see what she said. Uh, I never like to go into family dynamic. Okay, that's it. Here, uh Let's see if there's more in here. Damn, that is too short. Let's see here. Okay, did see, then see the interview. Did Laura ask if Andrew was still a person of interest to the FBI? <laughs> that should have been something. <laughs> nope. I like the answer that she gave her. Yep, that's it. Okay, at BBC, uh, I guess they tagged the person. Yep, Laura Kessenberg. Um, Kessenberg is trying hard to keep her job because her audience figure of flagging. Sophie Rigg on Sunday is beating her hand down. Okay, I don't know. She's turning into a peace morgan. Is she going to ask every American she meets whether the USA is Tim Harry and Meghan while smiling tightly hoping for a negative answer? What a fool. Yet, she kind of robust challenge the Sun editor about ongoing unfair Megan reporting. Okay, I'm not over there, so I don't know much about her. This was cringeworthy. An appropriate question to ask an ambassador. Also, Megan is an American citizen. Is actually journalism dead? That's exactly that. Okay, uh, Megan is an American citizen. She's private over there. Okay, is actually journalism dead? What is it with UK? They had tried to ruin Meghan's life, that she left the country with her family. Charles, Charles, William, and Palace are so desperate to control Harry and Meghan that they are now trying to coerce our ambassador to do their dirty work. Okay, translation, quote, focus on what the royal family government are doing for our future generation and leave Harry and Meghan alone. Exactly. They are failing everyone. Okay, laughing my ass off. She knows they won't have interviewed her for any other reason. My goodness, UK interviewer, quote, US ambassador, we're here discussing important political matters. You, you've heard that a nearly 40-year-old married UK man with two kids moved out of his grandma's house, got a job, and bought his first home. Tell me, how do Americans feel about that clown? All right, so let's move to the next tweet. I literally saw it before I start recording, so I added to it. I thought there was more to it. But these people over there are crazy. Uh, right, so this one is a bit longer. I started listening to it. The minute I started listening, I said, let me put it on my on my list for me to share with you. I, I think I retweeted it out also. Okay, if Prince Harry is right, the royal press relationship is covert. Andrew Moore. Okay, at Andrew Moore 9, okay, LBC presenter, political editor, news statement, uh, painter, Scott. Okay, so that's the guy who's talking. Okay. Explain why Harry's allegation and spare cannot be dismissed as tittle tattle and the royal family must respond. Okay, read here. So there's a, maybe I'll come back to this to put the link for you guys. Let me click on it and see. Yeah, I'll put the link of this for you guys. Okay, in the description. Okay. Oh, I didn't listen to the um, audio. It's 5 minutes and 52 seconds and then I'll read some of the comments below it. Let's listen. Well, what Harry is doing is spilling out in public all his personal hurt and anger, in particular about other members of his family. The book is called Spare for a reason, that old thing about the heir and the spare. He clearly feels this very, very deeply. And so there is a traditional, if you like, sibling rivalry going on, a very intense one. But I think by pushing this so far and making so much so public, he's turned that into a genuine crisis for the monarchy. <laughs> yeah, the thing is that 
why do they need you know to put someone down in order for the other one to be lifted up meanwhile when they're raising um, William they don't put actually I felt like William should have been raised in a sense much tougher more of uh, even though I don't like the way they treat heavy but more in a way to make him see where how other people live so, because at the end of the day everything you know his father has whatever the grandmother has it's already for him okay so once he get that once he become king he'll be more appreciative of the luxury of everything that he has but instead nope they left everything open for him he can never be wrong it is you know he can't even walk on a plank where people who, you know trying to <laughs> for safety and all of that so they should have raised him much tougher put uh, several barriers for him just to see okay challenging him to see how he will you know be able to maneuver to it but instead you could see now that heavy left okay he can't even think to say okay i'm going to a, a food bank let me bring something I'm sorry we can only come and give words and comfort, but we're, we are thinking about you the whole time and we really care about what's going on. So Sometimes it's just more than financial. Yeah. Well, if we can give you the old smile here and there, that's important. So, you know. Well, if we can give you the old smile here and there, that's important. So, you know. Okay, but instead goes for a photo app and he got dragged for it. All right, so let's listen. And then the wife who grew up outside of the palace wall is saying, I'm just learning. How much learning can you, you go into a charity place, you have more than the charity, bring something. My goodness, but let's listen. Harry's doing it now because of his long-standing and almost paranoid loathing of the British media and in particular the tabloid newspapers. Now I say paranoid, but I can see exactly why he's paranoid. His account of the way the paparazzi behaved around the crumpled wreck of that Mercedes in a French tunnel as his mother was lying bleeding out. And, and let's not forget as well, since I've been paying attention to them, I come across some old videos since Harry was young and his late teen, he keep on saying he wants that line. He doesn't want the tabloid to be intruding in his private life. Unfortunately, um every single story was complete lies which it rarely well which it always is basically which is a shame but you ever wanted to do a column in the newspaper but i'd know. love to do a column in the newspaper you know article right this is what happened last night no this is what happened <laughs> this is you know this is this is uh, half my official role but half my private role this is this is what i enjoy doing but the private life has to has to be private and i hope people respect that but when he's out there doing uh service to the firm and all of that he's all for it but privacy he wants that but no they want to mangle everything into one why because they feel like the taxpayers is giving them money so they should intrude into all of that okay so anyway that's that no doubt in agony strapped in in the back they weren't helping her they were photographing her that kind of knowledge and then the memory of being pursued by similar people all his life whatever mm -hmm. he's doing would drive anybody mad and I think he has decided to take on what he sees as this evil black octopus of the media the problem of course for him as he has acknowledged in a sense is that it's not out there it's not beyond there it's inside the family it's on the breakfast table certain members of the family and the tabloid press those certain members have decided to get into bed with the devil the briefings hmm. he thinks are given that's very up. sad to see that the other brother knowing very well what happened to his mother and then to side with the tabloid as well 
What it means is that a senior figure in the royal household, according to Mel on Sunday, was passing him information uh, in order to help defeat the Duchess's case. But I, I, I sort of blame Charles for that. It depends on what they put on William's head. Okay. But he should have known better. There's tons of things. His mom left audios and videos of her explaining her own side of the story. But he should have known. But he took the side of the father. And then to have the audacity to call his mother paranoid. The interview with my mother made lurid and false claims about the royal family, which played on her fears and fueled paranoia. But let's listen. Other members of his family, people very close to him, in particular, Camilla, the Queen Consort, to the media. That's what he thinks. So it's, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's, he I, said that in the, uh, in the book. All right, Camilla briefing to the press and all of that. My goodness. Oh, this woman is, I think she's the one who's going to help destroy the, the, um, the monarchy for UK. To rip out, as it were, the octopus from the family around him. Now, I'm, I'm an intellectual snob. I've been trying very, very hard for a very long time to avoid this story. It's tittle-tattle. I don't want to know about Harry's buttocks or Harry's todger or anything like that. <laughs> I don't know about buttocks or todger. <laughs> I'm laughing because I know the story behind it. That's all. But I have to acknowledge, having watched the interview with Tom Bradby, which Tom did very, very well indeed on ITV, this is a more thoughtful, interesting man whose allegations, I think, can't just be dismissed and pushed to one side as tittle-tattle. They are much more than that. If what he says is remotely right, then the relationship between aspects of the British media and the House of Windsor is corrupt and shameful. Yep, yep, that is true. That is true. Okay, because I could not believe how I stumbled onto that article where Charles is taking William to parties with the tabloid and this is the nonsense they put in his head thinking that if the tabloid if if he give access to the tabloid to get positive coverage everything will be well but instead these people are trying to blackmail how could you live every day to keep on defend defend because those people are all into your business this is the thing people are not perfect so you can't have these people into your life 24 7 because you will be making mistakes some of these mistakes are things you don't want people to know about but if you're letting this the royal orders into your 24 7 how could you live peacefully you can't so heavy who is one of the youngest over there was able to figure this out and these people who freaking old they don't they don't see that without I mean, I've been a pessimist many times because of the because of the work that we end up doing you can be surrounded by negativity sometimes kids that young have an appreciation and understanding greater than some of the people who have been on this planet for 60 70 years I think without I mean, I've been a pessimist many times because of the because of the work that we end up doing you can be surrounded by negativity sometimes but okay and they have to respond to that allegation, I think. If he's wrong, then what he's doing is an absolutely shameful smear and he should never be able to come back from it. But he certainly raised the stakes in the most extraordinary way. Yeah. Yeah. After what they did to his wife and then um, to uh, backstab him, to go intercept her letter after, okay, they told her to write the letter and then for the tabloid to have the letter. How did the tabloid know she wrote the letter? Someone within the uh, private conversation between the firm and Megan, not the firm, the family and Megan, who went and said it. I think there were a couple of people in the room when that was happening. I think uh, Megan, uh, Harry, the Queen, Charles, probably Baldy. Okay, but but these people who were supposed to be family should not be able to tell the royal voters okay the uh, the tabloid about the letter to go and intercept it sunday had the ruling against them in february and they were then appealing it so it was lawyers from the mail on sunday who would have approached jason naff knowing that these emails and messages existed mm. that would have been the point and unless I mean uh, the most likely outcome is that so someone within the family is leaking all of this and this is what really pisses Harry off Ted Verity the editor of the Mail on Sunday said in his signed witness statement that 
um, he had been given information that helped support Associated's case. He said this information came from a senior palace source. And Jason obviously would have then gone to William and Kate. And he said in his witness statement, this was, quote, not gossip or tittle-tattle. What does that mean? What it means is that a senior figure in the royal household... Jason obviously would have then gone to William and Kate. ...according to Mel on Sunday, was passing him information uh, in order to help defeat the Duchess's case. And clearly he has cooperated. He would not have cooperated he would not have with those without lawyers their without their definite knowledge. Okay, this is a woman that he loved, but the family behind him, okay, were in front of him, they're saying good things, and he probably was spilling the beans to them, how he feel, everything, but yet they're using his uh, weakness, okay, his concern and all of that against him by you know, undermine his wife, a person that he truly loved, my goodness, and then almost sent the wife to a suicidal uh, uh, path, a suicidal path, so I could understand Harry why he, you know, taking that stance, enough is enough. I think it's really, really dangerous for people like me or anybody to predict the end of the monarchy or this is going to be a catastrophe for the monarchy. People keep saying it and it's never quite true. Because let's be honest, for millions and millions of British people, the monarchy has been a source of sustenance and, and instrumental nourishment. It's been but I wish the royal family understand that aspect as well. So they should understand they are the glue that keeps the country together. But if the people say they don't want you, where the hell are you going to stay? You can't stay in the country that you are corrupting in every aspect of it. So little at a time, every mind is being open. You know, if this is what you're doing, and then they can live a comfortable life due to your corrupt way with the media and all of that. So you got to think which one you rather want, where your future look completely blank due to your own doing because of your position. Okay. And then when they could, you know, get rid of you and then start afresh, create something, a path to something better than not knowing what their future might be. Okay, so the royal family should understand this is the position that they have, how they could keep the uh, the country together. All they have to do is let the tabloid spill the beans, whatever it is that they're afraid of the tabloid from spilling, and then keep the country together. Because what I see here, once they're gone, and then you have all those politicians, just look at America. If all of them get in the, on the same page, the country is gone. Okay, so luckily there's some people who still feel the uh, freedom is worth fighting for. This is what's holding America right now. But if ev all those racists and all those corrupt people put their brain together uh, to corrupt the country completely, that's what will happen. But think of it also in the UK because all of those corrupt people are, are already on the right spot to corrupt it. Okay, so it's up to the family to put a stop to it, the royal family that is. It's been something that they have depended upon on sort of quiet, cold, lonely days, and they don't want to see it done down. The tabloid editors, by and large, understand that's how their readers feel, or many of their readers. Mm -hmm. feel. That's why they're being so hostile to Harry at the moment. So I don't think that's right. Be any sudden collapse of the British because system. Harry is uh, shedding light to their corrupt, uh, corrupt system, so they don't want that. Okay. But the family should understand as long the people, I've been saying this from the get go, as long the people are for you, you have no problem. Okay. But for some reason, it seems like the royal family depend on the tabloid only a small group of people when you have a freaking nation who could be behind you. But okay. Monarchy. But there is a real danger for it of a slow shrivel, a waning of support, particularly among younger people, mm -hmm. and therefore, in time, a waning of support for the funding of the British monarchy. And that's what they have to think about. Wow. So I think oh, this is... I haven't seen these. These images, not my king. Wow, there's more people putting that. The only one that I came across with, I share with you, are the young kids who were holding a sign, something, abolish the monarchy or something, and then police stopped them. 
that I was aware of that, but I didn't see all of this. This is probably a different event or something like that, but wow. And on the other side, he's saying, abolish the monarchy, I think. You could see it written back backward. All right, let's listen. Quite serious for them. I think it's a very, very bad moment. I think it could overshadow aspects of the coronation on which Charles depends so heavily. I think the best thing that they can do is to start to respond in a human way. Harry has changed the game entirely. That's right. The old motto, never explain, never complain, you know, just get on with it. Button up, say nothing, just keep going. No longer after these Harry interventions seems enough. That's right. So we have seen Harry now. He's the first royal in the sense that we have seen as an entire uh, passionate human being spilling his guts out. We don't agree with everything. I don't agree with a lot of what he said. And we can respond to him emotionally. In a way, frankly, we can't <laughs> respond emotionally to William or to Camilla or indeed to the king. I don't know. Women. Camilla should not be in that picture. Charles should have listened to the kids. Don't marry Camilla. You could see her. You could walk with her, whatever. But that marriage should never have happened because that woman put him herself in that position thinking she's going to run the show. And that's probably what's going to ruin Charles reign. Okay. But whatever the people are looking for on Harry, on William, they're not going to get it. I don't know how the his kids are being raised right now but whatever it is that they hoping to get from william they're not gonna get it okay so i don't know if they're gonna willing to change from what i'm saying i don't think william is in the path of where the country needs to be because this guy it seems to be enraged all the time to get his way only his way so i don't know there's a huge thing here that's happening and i have a small little feeling for Charles where he could make that change but the wife the wife is what's gonna ruin it for him that's what I think okay that way perhaps it's time for somebody inside the palace to think radically about okay we have to let the guard down further he all those people that could have given a voice of reasoning what did he do Charles removed them if what I read was correct, Charles and Andrew removed the people who were actually looking out for the firm. Charles team up with Andrew and get rid of him. Okay. So through what, since from what I read, since that removal of that particular uh, courtier or personal uh, assistant to the queen, they removed, everything have been going downhill. Okay. But Charles placed someone who will listen to him and do as he please. So we're not going to see that. Okay. He has thrown this challenge out. We can't just leave it there. We have to pick up the gauntlet. I've always described myself as a queenist rather than a monarchist because uh, I don't really believe in the sort of bloodline uh, spiritual uh, hierarchy that monarchy does. But for me, the queen has always been. This woman, uh, this guy right there, what's his name? That's the one. Um, uh, I don't, I forgot his. Was that the one? No, that's not him. I think it was the one that says, Harry, come back. The queen needs you and all of this. I, that's what I was thinking. But never mind. Part of my life. She's been there in the background on the notes around me. As it were, a sort of cadet member of my own family. I think a lot of people feel this. There was a, an emotional connection. I lost my mother last year. And my mother was not only about the queen's age, but at different times in her life looked a little bit like the queen. So there was probably some strange kind of maternal tug there. But so far as the monarchy is concerned, we are now in a different place. If it's the case that other members of the royal family, the senior members, are doing what Harry claims they're doing, which is thinking relentlessly and endlessly about their own self-interest, their own status in the hierarchy, and to that end, briefing poisonously against other people, anonymously through press contacts. If that's how they really behave, then I, for one, don't want anything to do with that yeah. for them. That would really turn me against the entire institution. Mm -hmm. And I suspect I'm not alone in that. Yeah. That was a good little discussion. And the other thing, maybe, maybe the only way for the institution to remain, only if, let's say, every six years or something, okay, there is a vote for the people of the UK to vote for which royal family of age who could represent the monarchy instead to the uh, firstborn or something like that this is the only way i could see it okay if any of the ro uh, royal family 
wants to be the head of the royal family, guess what? They have to show the people that they're for it. They're doing the work. People like what they're doing and all of that. And then every six years or whatever amount of years, maybe four years or whatever, okay, or two years perhaps, okay, where the people vote which royal family should be the head of the royal family and make things happen okay only to the bloodline that's all i could I, I could think of or otherwise get rid of it get a president all right because when these people already know this is uh was destined for them okay so they no longer have to work extra hard to prove anything because they already know this is there for them when you perfect example look at william okay he can do nothing nothing Okay, whatever he could do, I don't know what it is. Maybe just pegging. But uh, other than that, uh, look at Harry, who's already knew not he's gonna he's not gonna ha inherit anything. Look how hard he worked. So if any um, adult age of the family, blood family, royal family, okay, wants to be the head of the royal family, guess what? The people throw your hat on the on the one. Okay, let the people vote for you. Okay, and then other um, position, let's say the Duchy of Cornwall or whatever, and someone else, another member of the royal family uh, could be throw their hat on that. Okay, so that's what I think. And then each one of them will be paid respectively by the taxpayers. That's how I see it. But the way this is going is to cover up for me. All right, let's read some of the comment. Maybe I'll start a new video and keep this by itself. Okay, don't blame Harry. We've known this since Chuck's and Diana interview and the way the tabloid chase and stalk her. The press office smearing Diana was criminal just for the benefit of Chuck's mistress. The invisible contract was an open secret. Spare. Well, at least people are talking about it. Okay, this is the thing. Harry put the thing out there, let people aware around the world, this is how the system is running in the UK. Okay? So people are talking about it. And I applaud this guy, the video that I just shared with you, to give his opinion on it. Okay? Having met her several times, I really like Camilla, but the PR campaign in Spain of the last week has been extraordinary. The Daily Mail would have been the first paper to lay siege to any idea of Camilla, of Queen Camilla. Now they are putty and, uh, was it? Charles Hand. Uh, the invisible contract is real. There's people who's making um, reference to that. Prince Charles and Camilla plotted to depict Princess Diana as a scheming, hysteric new book. Prince Charles campaigned to make Camilla Parker Bowles acceptable to the public and the UK. And his mother, Queen Elizabeth, is laid out in a new unauthorized biography of the prince. I I don't know from what I'm seeing now I'm not saying um, Charles is innocent on all of this but I think m majority of the things that's happening to make Camilla look better do all of this I think it's all Camilla's uh, thing and then Charles just approve it okay it's uh, Camilla's idea and then Charles was like fine you could do it or was something like that give the okay so that's what I'm saying he's not innocent in it but uh, I think many of those stuff are Camilla's idea. And this is why I say if Harry ever were to reconcile with the father, okay, Camilla should never be in any aspect of conversation. She should not be aware of anything that was spoken of. Okay, the Daily Mail named and shame as the most untrustworthy UK media outlet for third year running. <laughs> okay, there's that. Happy birthday, HRH, Prince of Will. Uh-uh-uh. Wow. Mm, but anyway, I, when I look at the last picture, all I'm thinking, Diana, this beautiful woman, but he didn't want her. But okay. Interesting. Not currently living in the UK. Reading Spare as I might any other memoir. It's good. He obviously loved his dad and brother. Charles come off as a caring dad. That's what I saw too. Okay. There's the bomb. Seems pretty innocuous. And Todger reference is minimal and human. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's the God of Rags Harry is highlighting. There are many ethical and professional journalists in the media. It's the other ones that are the problem. And there doesn't seem to be any broadcasting or ethical standards the Rags have to follow in Britain. Yeah, they corrupt the system. All right, so there's more. Let's move on. Let me add one more and then maybe I'll do another video, part two. Uh, what is this here? Uh, why? Thank you at Malcolm Jamal Warner. 
I'm tired of folks debating her blackness from a distance. I don't care if they didn't discover that Meghan Markle was black until she started dating Prince Harry. Meghan knew it, as did anyone who cared to pay attention. All right, so let's listen to that. I did listen to it, and then I decided to just share it with you. You were in Suits for two years. Yeah. Did you work with Meghan Markle? I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, what was that like? It was cool. We didn't really have scenes together, so I'd see her, and she was really nice, really cool. Um, you know, uh, my best friend, I was talking about Chris, uh, he's a stage manager. He used to stage manage Deal or No Deal. Uh -huh. And Megan used to be on Deal or No Deal. Uh -huh. He's had more interaction with her uh -huh. than, than I did. But she was always cool. Let me ask you something. Did you know she was black? Yeah. What the F is this question? What the F is this question? <laughs> I mean, like, yeah. I'm like, yo, I got black dar, so we see it. Yeah. But instead of, like, I can see where a lot of people be like, I oh, didn't yeah. know. Yeah. The great thing is that she knew. That's it. She knew. That's so it. Suits That's it. And then the best thing is when you hear, um, just because you had a role on suit, you're supposed to know pretty much all the cast members or whatever. Uh, you show up when they tell you to show up, and maybe the time they tell you to show up, it's not the same time as Megan. But I'm glad he said, you know, she was nice, and I see her, whatever. But someone who was working on Deal or No Deal, you know, stage manager, who had more interaction with uh, Megan than he does. But it's glad to know that. All right, let's read some of the comments. One of my favorite things that you've said was saying that Princess Megan was white presenting, not white passing. A very important distinction, I think, and one that Malcolm just summarized so beautifully. The great thing is that she knew. Yep, that's it. Succinctly and perfectly stated. Yeah, as long as she knows who she is, that's it. Okay, and Megan have said it during, I believe it was the interview, uh, the engagement interview and where she said she know who she is and all of the stuff i'll look for that part that's gonna take me forever some of that scrutiny and you ended up making a very public statement about it some of that scrutiny was centered around your ethnicity mm. megan when you realized that what did you think of course it's disheartening you know it's it's um it's a shame that that is the climate in this world to focus that much on that or that that would be discriminatory in that sense but i think you know, at the end of the day, I'm really just proud of who I am and where I come from. And we have never put any focus on that. We've just mm -hmm. focused on who we are as a couple. And so when you take all those extra layers away and all of that noise, um, I think it makes it really easy to just enjoy being together and mm -hmm. tune all the rest of that out. You know, at the end of the day, I'm really just proud of who I am and where I come from. And Okay, hopefully she does a future podcast about the layers of blackness in the U.S. Mm, no, nah. why should she? She's so freaking busy with other things. Why should she talk about that? Because her, her mom didn't even raise her um, to know about the racism that's going on. And she experienced that. In a way, I don't know if it was a good thing or a bad thing that Miss Doria didn't even let her aware about the racism that is happening in the u.s but her knowledge her broad sense to understand things that's happening around her to know when her mom was called the n-word how her mom felt without her mom saying anything to her a couple years ago i heard someone call my mom the n-word so i think for me beyond being personally affected by racism just to see the the landscape of what our country is like right now certainly the world and to want things to be better okay she explained that and i don't know where i heard that where her mom um hold on to the steering wheel and uh she could see the vein popping in her mom's um uh, uh, hand and all of that but the mom never felt like it was necessary to for her to uh, uh to explain that to her I think she's Miss Doria mentioned that uh, I think it was the uh, docu series on Netflix where Miss Doria felt really bad about that that she didn't take the time to explain that to Megan. But at the same time, okay, this is already done. Miss Doria should not beat herself about that. It's already done. But the good thing about it, in my humble opinion, is that 
when Megan married into the royal family, she did not have any preconception about the racism. This is what I think is good about it. So she experienced that racism in a raw term. So now she could differentiate because she has a lot of white friends. Many of those white friends put themselves out there to speak to, uh, to help protect her mental well-being. So, in a way, I think, Ms. Doria, you did good, okay? In a way, okay? Because due to the fact that we knew from the time she was born to where she's at now, her things pan out. So, maybe it was destined for you to not mention it to her. She experienced it in a raw term. Sometimes, when you already have a preconception of things, not only <clears throat> you don't see the person as who they are, because due to your misconception, this is my humble opinion here. I'm not a freaking psychologist to tell you of anything of studies or anything, but this is my humble opinion. So Megan went there like a baby's bottom, brand new. Okay. She showed her true human nature to the royal family, but it was rejected. So now she gets to see the royal family in their raw term. Okay, whatever decision she made in terms with the royal family, it's her own judgment through her experience with them because she has a lot of different friends. When you listen to her podcast, she grew up with different uh, uh, people with different background. Okay, so that was good to know. So each person she present herself to, okay, she see them for who they are. So she didn't come up with a preconception. So this is what I think is good for Miss Doria for not putting anything in Megan's head. But Megan is smart enough to know the things that were happening around her. If you listen, go back to listen to some of her podcasts. Every podcast that she she said in the first season, okay, when she mentioned the the riot, Rodney King, all sort of this. Okay. I remember all of them. So she was able to see this stuff happening and she paid attention to them. Okay. So her going to the royal family, she experienced the royal family at her own discretion without any preconception or pre idea of racism. They're going to treat her this way. They, no, she experienced the royal family and it's war term. Okay. I hope I make sense. Okay, so the royal family rejected her when she presented herself as a human being. She was kind, she's still kind, but they rejected her. They tried to ruin her reputation, to lie about her, do all of this. So she experienced everything in war term. And this is, in a way, this is where it was, this is like a double sword, where Miss Doria then teach her where she's saying, what did I do? I'm a good person. I'm trying to do good thing, but why are they talking negative about me? Which almost led her to suicide. And thank God she talked to her husband about it. And then her husband saw the pattern and things that were happening and said, we got to get out of here. Okay. Everything is all well. Look where she's at now. Miss Doria get to see her babies, her grandbabies anytime she wants. All she has to do is say, uh, Megan, I'm coming over. Okay. Uh, I'm going to stay at the <laughs> guest house, send the kids over, get those, uh, uh, diapers or the food ready. I have them for three days. You and your husband could walk naked in the house for all I know. Let me spend time <laughs> with the babies. Okay. So it is what it is. All right. Let me read what's on here and then move on. Hopefully she does. She does a future podcast about the layers of blackness. No, she doesn't have to do that. It's not her business to do that. Okay, mulattoes, uh, ac was it? Actorun and quadrun are still term used in the deep south with a sense of pride. We still view each other as house versus field slave sad. Nah, she doesn't have to do that. Okay, she doesn't have to do that. Maybe through a conversation, like when she does her podcast, certain things pop up, she talk about it. But she doesn't have to sit people down and teach people. You want to learn about it? Guess what? Pick a book. Even though the school is not willing to teach it like, you know, Florida's trying to do. They don't want to teach about uh, um, black history or whatever. You pick a book. Uh, it's colorism. 
Actually, it's in many black family trees. Both sides of my parents have the three facet acto quad mold. What the hell? Dark berry deeply embedded and it's a mishmash mixture of uh, the human rainbow. I have two sets of biracial grandchildren who couldn't be more different. It's called life and living color. Also, I feel like black people knew even if white people didn't know, we always know. Okay, the debate has not been restricted to white people, which makes it even more frustrating, disappointing okay let's read what's there and then that's it okay tori needs to stay off this topic for some reason he's got a problem with her being black no others have that problem tori does not okay why did she then stated that she was caucasian if she was so proud of her mixed race of her blackness okay she, when did she said that there's a uh what is it uh, a campaign that megan said uh i forgot how it went but i have the video megan i i never come across where megan says she was white or anything okay why did she say that, that she was caucasian if she was so proud of her mix race or her blackness she never said that please don't post a picture from babe statistics save yourself the ridicule and me the secondhand embarrassment okay i where did that person say thank you at Boris Soda? I'd be a millionaire if I got paid every time that fake web page was presented as proof or fake claim of the Duchess of Sussex claiming to be Caucasian only. So trolls are either gaslighting or are uh, cognitively deficient, shaking my head. Yeah, they're putting nonsense. And this is the thing here. The, those people prefer reading those nonsense instead of listen to heavy and megan's uh, own words but whatever let's do a prayer okay i'm gonna stop this video let's do a prayer now prayer and i'll do another one because i have more tweets to share with you prayer for world uh, um i'm thinking well vision well peace well sustainable okay let's do that sustain well okay equality is good uh sustain oh sus equality let's do that equality and peace let's do that and peace <laughs> i just do things in prayer for peace i bow to the sacred and all creation may my may my spirit spirit i think that spirit may my spirit fill the world with beauty and wonder may my mind seek truth with humility and openness may my heart forgive okay let's look for an image Oh, this is why I was afraid I would not find once you said this type of a family rosary. Uh, okay, let's do this one. Prayer of St. John Henry Newman. May the Lord support us all the day long till the shades lengthen and the evening comes and the busy world is hushed and the fever of life is over and our work is done. Then in his mercy, may he give us a safe lodging and holy rest and peace at the last. Amen. All right. So there's not that much prayer here, but I'm going to leave it as that because there's more to uh, share with you. So I'm going to do video number two. It, this, it's, it is 1.30 already. Please take a moment to subscribe, like, and share. If you want to support this channel, there's a PayPal link and a Cash App link in the description. You could donate. Those who have donated, thank you. Now this video, if you want to listen to the entire audio, this is the video where you could listen to it. Okay. I have it up and YouTube didn't give me any problem. All right. So that's it. It is a great privilege to be with all of you today.
you know, we want we ask for forgiveness and uh, and please come back.